who you're working with first? Yeah, I'm with 17 News, the local NBC station. Yes. So we're just going to interview you about what happened and how you got here. So yesterday, what happened with your girlfriend? What Will you be? With Katrina? Excuse me. Would you be up uh, doing this live or as? No, it's a, not live. It's just recorded. Documentary. Where you trying to? We're doing it for the questions. news. Questions for the rest. Uh, no, for the news. For the interest of just that NBC. So or? you can get your side of the story. What happened out? So you can I don't the know quite what 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 you got on your side of the fence. We just work for the news station. No, about my side of what happened with the situation at. Yeah, we just want to know your side. Because I don't know exactly if I could put myself in any trouble at all by saying... You don't have to say anything that you feel is going to get you in trouble. You don't have to answer all the questions. All right, I could answer some questions. That's exactly how you said. Okay. Yeah, answer the questions however you feel. If you don't want to answer any of the questions, you don't have to. Oh, that's fine. I understand. You can proceed. So what happened yesterday? How did, how did this all start? What this is... Um, 12, 8, that's when this all started, about how this person ended up dead, Katrina Rivera, with the baby cut out, and, uh... Did you cut the baby out of her? Yes, I did. Why? Prove a point to, uh, religion. Isn't it your baby? It's not our baby, yes. So what point were you proving? First and foremost, to uh, defy every religion-based politic, politi political, to defy every law of any God creation of a book. Uh, you understand? Yeah. So did you think what you were doing was the right thing, or did you realize it was going to kill her? Well, we quite, as a team, you know, from extraterrestrial to religion to science, understand the voyage of mm, telepathy and somewhat of a um, higher power vested in us as a, a team, me and Katrina Rivera. So, we, I understood, yes, that I was going to kill her. She understood that she had to die. And she was okay with that? Well, I said, she accepted it, yes. So, were you guys on drugs before you did this? No, not at all. Was this something that you had planned for a long time to do? Well, it wasn't really something we planned on to do since uh, Jesus returned back when he was hanging on those crosses, three crosses, right here in back of the Canyon Hills, what you represented, hello, as they did back in 2000, you know, before Christ and after Christ, whatever, after death, whatever they want to mix it up right now a little bit with you. To say the least, um, I was capable of a lot better. I could have went with this other option, but I just respected the plan and authority of the Father, so the Holy Spirit went in and said, hmm, What was the there? other option? Leaving and going a path of uh, defying the Father. Hmm. Do you guys have any other kids together? No matter of fact, we uh, have Madeline and Mia Bella, yes. When they were born, did you guys consider doing anything like this with them? Oh, these are first facts of uh, what you're talking about, yes. So why with this baby? Oh, this baby? Mm -hmm. Because uh, as, a, as, a, as a father who I am, I'm facing these things as an antichrist, regardless of uh, any nature of uh, humankind come in contact with the, uh, she's saying, uh, you know, a higher being as our uh, presence of uh, brain, you know, will go and smack 
as a whole nation, as one, as every, you know, other individual, seven nations, and say, hey, whose brain are you? You like my flesh? You know? They look at you and just say, hey, me? How you like my brain? Huh? Well, that's fine. And get back to the topic and say, well, uh, accepted the fact that it was, it was gonna come and the kids didn't know a lot about it. They just had to act like we're just humans and say, that's fine, you know, mental illness rules, rock on, you know? So when, when yesterday did you take the baby out? When yesterday, well, this was, was on the- before um, the police okay, came or after they came? This was before. I took him out about seven hours prior. I took, killed her on the 8th. Late night at 911, but is that front porch of uh, our house in 2213 Fairfax? And she wanted me, but off the subject, put her in a car, whatnot, drove down, did whatever, and uh, you know, had some time to my father and just be with it. So, was the baby alive at first? No, you know, kept a little hour, six hours uh, to myself, just with her dad in the back seat side of the road somewhere over on Conwood and just had a time to reflect what me and my father had uh, you know been sitting here to do Antichrist to Jesus saying to Jesus Christ what I and we just talk about how we're gonna proceed and whatever we understand about how do we communicate and then put into the plan and effect which route we took so then, therefore, we just went, okay, I got back in the car, drove to the mission over there on Edison Highway, just relaxed right there, wait till, it's called a prophecy fulfilled, yeah? Everybody involved, we're not human nature. And then that's why I stood for a little bit. And that's where I cut her open, when he told me to. When who told you to? Uh, the father, it's just the same one who was to communicate with uh, Jesus Christ is when he was here. So, are, do you think that you're possessed by the devil? Me? Yeah. I'm the Antichrist. I'm capable of taking separate business of any God that ever said the Creator was here to defy law of anything that I ever said that I was Adam from the first, you know, to understand the flesh of pleasure and take it into put it into a soul, you know, the inside and out. The firstborn, that's me. Yeah, it's me. The perfect specimen. That's it. That's it. The definition of a. Um, to fulfill something nobody else ever will ever compare to. So do you feel bad that your girlfriend and your baby are dead? Oh yeah. Um, um, I take it, he take it easy on her. I take it easy on her, so no. I'm remorse of not, but um, I don't feel bad. Hey, how'd you do it? What instructions did you get to fulfill the request from your father? How did you go through this killing your girlfriend and the baby and look right at her? How'd I do it was I let it start as a child to keep a secret of knowing about uh, what is it, society, how they kept a secret from when Jesus was here. I'm not sure what quite your religion is. I don't care to ask anymore. But I respect the fact that uh, Jesus Christ, as when he uh, came back and rose in his beliefs and put it in a book, after that, a little mixed up. I'll start over. How did you get your instructions and what instructions did you get? Excuse. All oh, right. When I was seven, that's when it says uh, put them in effect. Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And through all that time, you'd hear these voices over and over again? Well, he'd take it and say, go left, and I had to go right. And I get, he's in an Asian spaceship or something. So you already... So I had to learn every process Got of it. how he really had to communicate. He said, go right, and I go left. Got it. So you did pretty much opposite of that. In the process of, of going through this, how did you kill your girlfriend and the baby? And what instructions did you get in order to do that? Well, he, throughout that whole time of just saying shut up before I die, because he threatens me. Is that right? We see, yes. So what were your emotions at that time, and why did you do it, and how did you do it? He didn't no longer threaten me after I told me one time, go left, and I went right. Mm -hmm. He said, defy me, do what you do, and just do it the right way. What was that way? What did you come up with? What was your way of to do this? Oh, he said just do it as you were alone in the garden. And did you use any instruments, tools? Did you use your hands? Yeah, he gave me uh, instructions of uh, a razor blade that he provided me in the garden when no one else was there. An exacto knife or was it a utility knife? Just about a razor blade then. And you did all of this with the razor blade? You did the C-section with the razor blade? Yes. What were your thoughts through that process? I said just taking the baby, cutting it as if I was some, what was it, savage or beast by myself. Yeah. So you had some insight into the future of this baby and you were doing what? No, I get out and just say, he lets me loose. He lets me out. He says, like, she run it down and just, hey, what am I doing? I'm just trying to do like 20,000 things at once, yeah. but I'm focused on one thing. And I'm, I'm cutting, I'm cutting like that, but why this whole, as a whole, is still in process of watching me, it's paranoia. So, but at the same time, it's, it's like I'm doing this, and he lets me, yeah. Gotcha, I gotcha. So it was pretty intense then, wasn't it? Uh, it's just uh, my face, uh, I would imagine. Yeah. I don't can't figure to intense. How did you get her in the position to do this? Did you guys agree to do this? Did she lay down on the bed somewhere? Talk to me about that. And, and well, I killed her at the house. We set this plan up about a couple, I would say 100,000 years ago, but we said Jesus Christ here before that. And then we're say we're here, hell Satan. Let's lie, let's take it back from 2,000 mm -hmm. years ago. Jonathan, John the Baptist, his soul, and he's here, and every prophet from every generation, from any bloodline that's ever been uh, in, in association with that back in Jerusalem. So was it your idea to clear this bloodline? Was well, to connect as a nation, as we're saying, the Easy Christ. Okay, now, you mentioned something a minute ago that you are the Antichrist. But I see, but I see, I can't. Okay, tell me, is this by proxy? How were you appointed this? The fact of power vested in this whole as a understanding of how do we communicate with the Father and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and the Son is sitting in between. So, well, it has a process of elimination. It, Does this cause you stress um, through all this process of being arrested, killing your girlfriend, killing the baby? And talk to me about how you feel right now. Do you think that you've done exactly what you were told to do? Clear that up for me. Well, we fulfilled a um, pretty magnificent uh, creation, man, to say by fact. Yes, it says a uh, very excited for the next uh, process of uh, experience. As uh, um, I would imagine to tell you, uh, nothing will ever be the same. Yes. Yeah. And in your mind, nothing will ever be the same. You hear those voices now, are they talking to you and telling you how to respond to our questions? <clears throat> what appears to bone, you know, sharpest instrument, which is the creator. I mean, kiss, hallelujah. In your vernacular. Okay, I got you. We'll say separate the marrow from the bone. It is. And where do you stand with that analogy? What's your feelings? I say, we well, you fear into religion, anything of anywhere. It's a world as a nation where just have to represent myself and my lonely tattoos and my figure of, hey, look at me. Mm. It's as a, as a human. 
What was your girlfriend's thoughts? I mean, if you discussed all of this, take me through that. Tell me her demeanor, her mindset, and how you guys came up with this idea. Well, say, tell you the truth, I said, I would ask you a religion first off before answering it. Is she the same religion as you? Eternity, yes. Okay. With that in mind, take me through that process of what you two discussed prior to killing her. Well, the process of uh, the deed mm -hmm. or the whole just how it started through the night? Yeah, how you started. I, I, I don't need the details. What I need to know is why you... As a prophecy, like we're talking about religion, or we're going to just go and say, you know, just a functional uh, way of putting it to society. Functional way to put it to society. Go ahead and take me through that. That ain't... Well, uh, it's very well, as I told you, I say right and you say left. You go right. I say, I hate you, which means I love you. Mm -hmm. So you say, turn around and talk to it uh, behind my back, as in a social society, which is a secret that no one else will understand unless they're in it. Is that why the, in the history that you have with the spousal b abuses, you were convicted on, I think, a couple of those and arrested a couple of times. Is this all part of that process that got you to where you're at right now? Well, absolutely. Say it again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Why? But we could have went about 20 different little routes, 10 precise, that's it. Mm -hmm. But we had to give them chances and chances to understand and succeed and say, what do you want to do? This is talking to the higher powers, not the four founding fathers of his nation or Islam or right, any right, right. It's present time right now. capable uh, seven nations where is that of any religion we had to give them because we're all as one this is king of all kings the city lord of all lords and it's the city not to change subjects on you right now but we're kind of under a deadline and I want to give you every opportunity in the world to say what happened but if we could summarize now come to a finalization here take me through the day when you decided that you had to kill her and the baby to where you got arrested, putting the baby down on the street corner. Take me through all of that. Okay, it was a, what was it, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. My daughter's a queen angel, might not I ever ask anybody that's actually has nothing to, um, what was it, to do with my social circle. Queen Angel, as a fact, busted. From there on, she said, "This is Sunday. Let's get it." So I had to go and put it in effect to that night. As the father, the Holly, the highest of uh, authority, so and made it a process. It made it a process of just following through on whatever, whatever, and however, however they proceeded as one to actually have her dead on the floor put her in the trunk I mean put her in the back seat of the car drive have a, some alone time talk to the father and then go on and proceed and, and I was do as I as I chose as a human because I'm still as, as human as a man that's me along with everything else any of a, of a, a nation of any other belief of a God actually here so what was her thoughts when you were cutting? Was she alive when you cut no, the baby No, she was out? dead. And how did you do that? She was dead about um, from 9 to, to 7, I think. I, I think I put her open at 7-11. How did you kill her? I socked her and I choked her. And then the baby. Once you cut the baby out, how did you kill the baby? I killed her, Katrina Rivera, right there. How? I strangled her. At the house? Yes. And then hours later you went to Edison and then cut the baby up? Yes. How do you feel? With all of this, you've completed your instructions and you are the Antichrist. How do you feel about this that you've done now? I've said remorse, that's it. Why the remorse? 
I said, only two words that I just describe it. Yeah, I bet that's tough. Goodness. Yes. Did you cut away? Uh, yeah. Where on Edison did you cut the baby off? You said you went to Edison Highway, right? In a garden? Was it actually in a garden? No, it was right on the side. Well. Side of the road? Yeah. But like uh, by what? By the mission, by the um, homeless shelter. Oh. And no one saw you? No. Was it in the middle of the day, at night? Well, I recorded it throughout the process. I was recording, yes. You recorded it? Oh, yeah. Like with your cell phone? Yes. What'd you do with that recording? Oh, somewhere in the car. Yeah. Why did you record it? Uh, for no particular reason. To come up with something fast, because he likes tricking me. Say, here, do something with this when they ask you that. So I got to just get total freestyle with whatever you're asking me. So, yeah, that's what I did. Left it in the car. Anything else you want to add? I had to ask, um, what are you going to do with this uh, recording of me? Uh, we're going to do a new story. We've been doing the, the story since she was missing, so we're going to do a new story with this. Oh, have you now? Mm -hmm. A question I've got, too. On Sunday, that's when our, what we call a bolo, when I, that's be on the lookout, and it's a uh, missing person at risk. It was Friday. Yeah, was that was Friday. Was that Friday that you and she decided to go on your venture? And this was uh, Thursday on the 8th. And then Friday she didn't show and everybody started looking. What were your thoughts when the cops pulled up behind you and you're not pulling over? Well, see the figure to Hey, how I look? How are you? So you didn't care? Well, it's all just for a purpose, so I didn't really actually care. Oh, I see. Now, I talked with a witness, said that they saw you with the baby in your arms. Was the baby in the car with you during this chase? And then nah, it's a whole complicated situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cause I got my guys that, with suits right here, the sheriff's department, shots out. I look to my loves of my life with authority to figure this to be a professional, you know. So with the baby in your arms and you get out Law of the car and you go up the street and down the street? Uh, it was real fun, actually, to praise my father out loud. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. and great glory be to God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, it was actually pretty fun. It amazed me. Yeah. And why? So, it's so fun. It was fun? Oh, absolutely. The adrenaline rush? The excitement? No, it's just all at once. It's just like, how do I look, God? Am I blessing you enough? Hello, everybody who says no. So yes. you were doing that for God's approval? Oh, absolutely. It's just no word no one and I was, everybody else in between between that had none function about anything in my progress of my report, who I had to do it for. Well, it's cool. I respect the manner, but hey, I felt just relaxed and relieved. Okay, do what you do. So I gave it to them, their turn. Chase me, I act stupid, whatever whatever you had to do with it. They know who I'm talking about. I can't represent as a, you know, hey, you're pretty fine specimen. I see you in your brain before you even ask me. Thank you, you know? I just gotta represent and act as if I'm just a normal, productive citizen of society. I never was. So God approved of what you did and he praised you for it? Oh, absolutely, hippies, yes. Okay. Now, are you hearing those voices at all now? I'll tell communicating mm -hmm. with my father? Yes, sir. Oh, I see, absolutely, you're not hearing. You're not hearing now? You're hearing. I'm hearing. That's me, I'm coming to you. Understood, so through you, he speaks. Okay. Understood. Yes, yes. Anything else you want to add that we haven't asked you? I don't know if father is to ask you a question at all. No, we're just making sure that you have gotten to say everything you wanted to say. This is your time, your turn, anything you want to say. So if there's anything else that you want to say that we've overlooked or neglected, let us know. Go ahead and tell us what you, what you want. Well, the act of uh, appreciating you coming down here 
taking their time and uh, and uh, acknowledging my mental illness, you know, praise and worship to them, whoever they are, on medication for whatever kind of illness uh, you know, the brain brings. But, uh, well, I don't know if it's this important or not as a situation at hand. Killing a baby, because I didn't kill the baby. I breathed in them. I, you know, I had some personal time with the little relationship. Oh, my firstborn son, look just like me, you know. Hold him, pat him. You know, a dead woman in the back. I take a relaxation and relax and say, okay, situation at hand. Hmm. You know, do whatever I had to do as a aunt. Human, I guess. Are you glad that this has all come to a conclusion? No. Uh, Tell me why. Uh, based on a, uh, there's a lot of dishonor, which is recognition of, of who I am, but with the realization of not caring about uh, just saying, hey, you're telling the truth, but we still got to play along that you're mentally ill. Hallelujah. All right, well, I'm going to 